Hey, AP Bio, Dane here. A few weeks ago, I was hit by a large metal object on stage, hence the mark under my eye. It hurt. I also got a large cut on my arm. But what if my arm wasn't there? People experience this phantom limb syndrome in limbs they have either lost or were born without. The first documented medical occurrence of this post-amputation sensation was given by a French military surgeon by the name of Ambroise Paré, who noticed that his patients were experiencing pain in their lost limbs, areas of their body that they no longer had. As it turns out, that sensation is actually a hallucination that results in a very real feeling of pain. A study done in 2010 found that 4 in 10 amputees had experienced phantom pain in the last week. Tamar Markin, a student at the University of Oxford, conducted an experiment in which she asked people who had lost their hands to imagine moving them. When they performed this action inside of an MRI, their brain activity was identical to that of a person who still possessed both hands. The scan also showed that people who experienced phantom pain had some abnormal activity in the parts of their brain that processed of movement and touch. This is a very strange phenomenon. However, these phantom senses are not limited to phantom limb syndrome. There is another phantom sense known as phantosmia, in which people smell things that aren't there. This is commonly due to nervous tissue damage in the olfactory cavity. Unfortunately, these senses don't tend to include roses or freshly baked cookies. In fact, these smells are quite unpleasant, usually resembling uh, rotting flesh, fecal matter, or burning rubber. This olfactory hallucination most often occurs as a result of head injuries, strokes, migraines, or upper respiratory infection. There is another olfactory hallucination known as parosmia, in which the smell is present, however it is perceived as though it is something else. As you can imagine, these smells aren't very pleasant. However, there is another phantom sense that affects even blind people. It's called Charles Bonnet Syndrome. It's named after a Swiss philosopher who lived about 250 years ago. He wrote about his grandfather, who had lost his sight to cataracts. But despite his loss of sight, he began to have these visions. Apparently, he could see patterns or birds or people or buildings that weren't really there, despite his loss of vision. How these hallucinations and a loss of sight are linked is still unclear. Some research suggests that collecting information through your eyes stops your brain from creating its own images for you. When you lose your sight, your brain tries to fill the gap by showing you patterns or pictures that you've already seen before. These ghostly images seen by blind people appear to develop in the same area of the brain that's active when a person who can see sees the face of another person. Dominic Fitch, a psychiatrist at the University College London states, as far as your brain is concerned, it's the same experience. Although these olfactory and visual hallucinations are still a bit poorly understood, musical hallucinations are not. Contrary to popular belief, your ears can fool you just as much as your eyes or nose can. In one case, in one case of this, a woman was awoken by the sound of very loud music. She complained to her apartment manager about it, but he explained that there had been no music playing. She proceeded to call the cops. This phenomenon is known as tinnitus, and is common in people who suffer from hearing loss. Ah! Hearing loss! Oh, okay. Studies have shown that people actually listening to music and people suffering from the ghostly sounds tend to have the same brain activity in the same regions. These phantom senses are more common than you might think. You never know when one might happen to you. I'd like to thank my videographer, Sean O, and as always, thanks for watching.